ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت يعز ويذل وهو على كل شيء قدير واليه المصير واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الله به الغمه وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى اتاه اليقين فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين يقول الله تعالى بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد we praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him we seek refuge in him from the evil that is within ourselves and we seek his forgiveness and his assistance and we send our salutations on our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith qudsi this is a hadith in which rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is narrating from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this hadith يقول الله تعالى الكبرياء ردائي والعظمة إزاري فمن نازعني واحدا منهما ألقيته في جهنم ولا أبالي الله سبحانه وتعالى says in this hadith قدسي that pride is my cloak pride is my cloak and greatness is my robe greatness is my robe and whoever tries to compete with me in any of these two things then i will throw him into jahannam into the hellfire without any warning so pride is a attribute of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-kibriya this is a attribute of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is from allah's perfection that he is described with pride and described with uh, greatness and this is praiseworthy for the creator but for the creation it is blameworthy so for the creator for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is not only okay for him to be described with pride but this is part of his perfection that he is described with pride that pride is his cloak as he says in the hadith as for the creation then the creation pride from the creation is blameworthy and looked down upon and that is because the creation has no claim to pride everything that you would be proud of and have pride in it will go back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah is the true owner of everything so everything that you would be proud and arrogant with it goes back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what do you have to be prideful for so true pride only belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so we find in the quran and in the sunnah warning about pride from the creation allah azza wa jalla says in the quran innahu la yuhibbul mustakbirin that he does not love those who are prideful who are arrogant and in the hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says la yadkhulul jannah man kana fi qalbihi mithqala habbatin min kibr that no one will enter jannah who has even a small morsel of pride in his heart even a small morsel of pride in his heart that person will not enter paradise so pride is something reserved only for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if any of the creation tries to compete with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he says in the hadith will throw that person into the fire will throw that person into the fire 
So pride is a blameworthy characteristic for the creation. And it is beneficial to know what is pride. Because sometimes a person might have a misunderstanding of what actually is pride. In the same hadith in which Rasulullah said that no one will enter paradise if they have the smallest amount of pride in their heart, a man asks Rasulullah إِنَّ رَجُلُ يُحِبُّ أَنْ يَكُونَ ثَوْبُ يُحِبُّ أَنْ يَكُونَ ثَوْبَهُ حَسَنًا وَنَعْنَهُ حَسَنًا That a man, he likes that his clothing and his shoes look good. He likes to have nice things. Is this pride? This person wanted to, wanted to know. So Rasulullah SAW answered, he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ جَمِيلٌ يُحِبُّ الْجَمَالِ Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty. This is not what is meant by pride. To have want nice things, to have nice shoes, to have a nice clothing. This is not from pride. And this is not from arrogance. And then Rasulullah defined what is pride. He said, وَلَكِنْ الْكِبْرُ بَطْرُ الْحَقِّ That pride is that a person rejects the truth. That there's something in them that causes them to reject the truth when even when they know that this is the truth. الْكِبْرُ بَطْرُ الْحَقِّ وَغَمْتُ النَّاسِ And it is looking down on people, thinking that you are better than other people. This is what pride is. That you reject the truth, even though you know it is the truth, and you look down on people. You think that you are better than other people. Why are people prideful? Why are people arrogant? There are a number of reasons, a lot of reasons. I will mention, inshallah ta'ala, four reasons of pride, and these four can be found uh, in the Qur'an, displayed on several characters that are mentioned in the Qur'an. The first is a person being prideful and arrogant because of some physical features and physical bounties that Allah has bestowed upon him. And this is one of the types of pride that was displayed by Iblis. Iblis, and we will mention a little bit about that later on, inshallah. The second type of pride is a person who is who, prideful and arrogant due to power and authority. They have power, they have authority. And so they are proud and arrogant because of that. And this is the type of proud, pr pride that was displayed by Fir'aun. Displayed by Fir'aun. The third is a person who is proud and arrogant due to wealth and social status. They have a lot of money, they have a lot of wealth, or they come from a wealthy family, or they come from a, a, a family of status, elite family. And so they feel pride and arrogance due to that. And this type of pride is a, was displayed by a man by the name of Qarun, also mentioned in the Quran. And the fourth type is pride due to strength and might. Pride due to strength and might. Somebody is physically strong, or a people, or a nation, they are physically strong and physically powerful and able to defeat others in physical confrontation. And this is the, uh, and this is the type of pride that was displayed by the people of Ad, to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Prophet Hud. So let's come back to these four types of pride. The first is pride due to physical, a physical uh, gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon somebody. And this can be either a person has been given looks, good looks, or has been given some other bodily feature that they feel makes them better than others. And this is the type of pride that was displayed by Iblis. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered all of the angels to prostrate and Iblis, even though he was not an angel, he was in the gathering of the angels and the company of the angels. And so he was given that order as well. And he refused. Aba wastakbara. Allah says that he refused and he became proud and arrogant. وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ And he was from those who disbelieved. When Allah Azawajal asked him, Why did you not prostrate? His answer was, أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ I'm better than him. Why? خَلَقَتَنِي مِنْ نَارُ you, you, you created me from fire. Oh Allah, you created me from fire. وَخَلَقَتَهُ مِنْ طِينَ And you created him, meaning Adam alayhi salam, from clay. So because of my physical features, I am better than him, and I should not be prostrating to him. And this is the reasoning that Iblis gave, and this was the reason why he was thrown out uh, of paradise and he fell out of Allah's favor. The strange thing is that our scholars have mentioned that what Iblis was proud and arrogant over, 
this is not really something that uh, had any worth. Because is fire really better than clay? And this is something the scholars have discussed. Is fire really be better than clay? As Iblis claimed. And they said that actually, if we, com if we make a comparison, then clay is actually better than fire. Because clay builds. You can build things with clay. While fire destroys. Clay, from clay you, you, you get, and clay and mud and dirt, you get vegetation, produces. While fire burns and produces only ashes. Clay is uh, a lot more, uh, the, the features of clay are a lot more stable. While fire is unstable. And a number of other things that we can mention, which would show that actually clay is better than fire. But regardless, which, is, which, is the, which of the two is better, it is an irrelevant conversation to begin with. Because this is not something to have pride in to begin with. As Rasulullah says in hadith, Inna Allah la yanzuru ila ajsadikum wa ila suurikum wa ila suurikum. Allah does not even look at any of these things. Allah does not look at your physical features. So this is not something that you should be proud and arrogant uh, about to, be, to begin with. Because this is not something that Allah evaluates you based on. Allah looks at, He does not look at your bodies. And He does not look at your forms. But He looks at your hearts, what is in your hearts. And He looks at your actions. And so a person, no matter what physical gifts that Allah has bestowed you with, it is Allah who gave you those gifts, and you have no right to be proud and arrogant concerning those gifts that Allah has given you. And oftentimes, as we see in the case of Iblis, a person might be proud and arrogant about something that they have really no reason or claim to be proud and arrogant concerning uh, about that to begin with. We find that sometimes people are proud about their skin color. All right, I am a certain skin color, and this person is a, a different skin color. I mix, that makes me better than them. Well, who told you that this is better than that skin color to begin with? So oftentimes people, they pride themselves on physical characteristics that don't have any real basis to be proud about to begin with. And so this is the type of pride that was displayed by Iblis. The second type of pride is pride due to uh, power and authority. Power and authority. And this is the type of pride that was displayed by Fir'aun. Fir'aun, of course, was the tyrant ruler of Egypt at the time of Musa alayhi salam. And due to his power and authority, he went so far as to claim that he was the Lord Most High. He said that I am your Lord, the Most High. He claimed divinity for himself, only due to his pride. And he said, to his people, أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِصْرَ وَهَذِهِ الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِي Don't, doesn't the kingdom of Egypt belong to me? And don't the rivers of Egypt flow underneath me? And he had all, all these claims. And he said to Musa alayhi salam that, أَمْ أَنَ خَيْرُ مِنْ هَذَا الَّذِي هُوَ مَهِينَ وَلَا يَكَادُ يُبِينَ Am I not better than this? Referring to Musa alayhi salam, this person who is lowly and he can't even express himself properly. So Fir'aun, due to his pride and arrogance, is causing him to reject the truth. And we know what happened to him after that. Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions in the Quran was that him, Fir'aun, and his army, they were proud and they were arrogant without any right. And they thought that they would not return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa says that we seize them and we threw them all into the sea and they were all drowned as a result of that. So this is pride due to power and authority. The third type of pride is a person being proud due to wealth and social status. You have been given wealth, a person is a millionaire or a billionaire and they think because of this wealth that they have that they are better than others. And this example of that is Harun who is also a contemporary of Musa alayhi salam, and he was from the people of Musa. And Allah gave him such a great treasure that it was difficult for even a group of strong men to lift the keys to his treasure. But instead of being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his, the, the favors that was bestowed upon him, Qarun was arrogant. And so his people told him, Don't be proud, don't be arrogant. 
Allah does not love those who are proud and arrogant. And then they, saw, they also advise him, وَبِتَغِيْفِي مَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهِ دَارُ الْآخِرَةِ And seek what Allah has provided for you in this life. Meaning that it's okay to grab their wealth. We're not telling you that you have to give up your wealth. But be thankful for the wealth you have been given and don't look down upon others who have not been given what you have been given. وَبِتَغِيْفِي مَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا And don't forget your portion in this life. And do not forget your portion in this life. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنَ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ And be good. Be good to people. Just as Allah was good to you. Don't take the favors that Allah has given you and then use that to look down upon others. But Qarun did not heed the advice. And what did he say? He said, قَالَ إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي Everything I have, he said that, I have it because of my knowledge. I have it because of me. It's my hard work. All right, my sweat and my blood and sweat and tears is what made me successful. And he attributed everything to himself. And he did not give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or any appreciation for what Allah azza wa ta'ala gave him. He said, everything that I have, all this wealth that I have, is because of my knowledge. I've been given everything because of me, because of what I did. All my success is due to me. And so, because of his pride and his arrogance, Allah Azza wa Jalla says that فَخَصَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ So we caused the earth to swallow him, not only him, but along with him, all of his treasures were swallowed along with him. So this is the end result of people who display pride and arrogance due to their wealth. And lastly, the fourth category of pride, as we mentioned, is pride due to uh, power and strength, due to power and strength and might. And this was displayed by the people of Ad. The people of Ad, Allah blessed them with incredible amount of strength and power. And they were able to defeat any other nation that was around at that time. As Allah says about them, Allati lam yukhlaq mithluha fil bilad. That Allah says that the people of Ad, who the likes of whom have never been created in the land before. So before Ad, there was no civilization that came that were equal to them in might and in strength. And instead of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did they say? They used to say, they, they used to say that we are, no, no one is more mighty than us in power. Man ashaddu minna quwa. They would say that who is more mighty than us? Who is stronger than us? Who is more stronger than us? And they would boast about this. And they would be proud about this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do they not know that Allah is the one who created them? And He's even more greater than them in strength. And so they use their strength uh, that Allah has blessed them with as a source of arrogance and they cause oppression in the land and they thought that they were better than everybody else and we hear these kind of claims today we are the strongest nation in the world we have the most powerful military in the world we cannot ever be defeated these claims have been made before by people who have come before they said who is more mighty than us in strength and what happened to Ad? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them and he destroyed them in a way that he did not destroy any other nation before. All the other nations, when they were destroyed, remnants were still left. When Allah destroy, destroyed the people of Thamud, there were still remnants, and they, those can still be seen today. You can go in, in Arabian Peninsula, you can see the ruins of Thamud. When Allah destroyed Fir'aun, he preserved his body. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he destroyed the other nations before, remnants will still, will, will still be remaining. But when Allah destroyed the people of Ad, because of their arrogance and their pride, he destroyed them in totality. And Allah asks the question in the Quran, فَهَلْ تَرَى لَهُمْ مِنْ بَاقِيَ Do you see any re remnants of this mighty civilization that came before? Nothing of them is left. We don't have any trace of the people of Ad, who Allah says, لَمْ يُخْلَقْ مِثْلُهَا فِي الْبِلَادِ that Allah did not create anybody like them before. But there's nothing, there's nothing left of them. They have nothing to show of their powerful and mighty civilization. So these are types of pride and there are more but few of them that 
we can see displayed on characters mentioned in the Quran and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from pride and arrogance and to grant us humility and submission بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. If you look at these examples of pride and people who display pride as mentioned in these verses of the Quran, we'll notice something common in the way they're speaking. In the way they're speaking, as for Iblis, when he was asked why you did not prostrate, he said, أنا خير منه أنا. We use the pronoun of I. I am better than him. خلقتني من نار وخلقته من طين. That you created me from fire, you created him from clay. And Fir'aun, he used the same pronouns. فقال أنا ربكم الأعلى. I am your Lord, the Most High. And he said, أليس لي ملك مصر? Does not the kingdom of Egypt belong to me? وهذه الأنهار تجري من تحتي. And these rivers are flowing underneath me. And Qarun, what did he say? إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي He used the pronoun that I earned this, that this wealth that I got is from me, my knowledge, my hard work. And the people of Aad, مَنْ أَشَدُّ minna قُوَّةً Who is more mighty than us, us in power. They're all using these pronouns of I or we. And we have to be very careful when it comes to these pronouns. Because this can lead us if they don't already indicate pride, then they could lead a person to become prideful and arrogant. So we notice that all of these people, they're using I and me and we, and they're not attributing anything back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is not the characteristic of the believer. For the believer, all of what we have been given is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever success, accomplishments that we have, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Rasulullah he taught us to say a very powerful dhikr. And he said to the companions, Ala adullukum ala kenzin min kunuz al jannah. Should I not direct you to a treasure from the treasures of paradise? And he told them and he instructed them to say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There's no might or power except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no might or power. Everything is from Allah. Everything is from Allah. Nothing that you have is from your own self. None of your accomplishments is from you. Yes, Allah has granted you accomplishments, but who is the one who gave you the intellect or gave you the opportunity or provided you for the opportunities to get where you are today? A person might be proud and, and boasting about where they are, you know, what job they have or how much money they have, but they forget that Allah is the one who gave you these opportunities. You didn't do it on your own. Allah gave you the opportunities and He could have withheld these opportunities if He wanted to. So we have to be very, very careful in our way of speaking, using these type of personal pronouns, I and me and we, and I did this and I did that. And we, we see this uh, very prevalent in, in politics, right? When the politicians are speaking, I did this and I did that, and I, uh, uh, I passed this bill and I did that. And they use these type of words as a source of pride and arrogance. So we have to be very careful when it comes to these type of words and this type of language. With that said, there are some times where it is allowed and it, is, uh, it might be permissible and even mandatory in certain situations where a person might need to uh, mention things about themselves. But the, the default is that a person should not praise themselves. Allah says, do not praise yourself. But there are certain times where a person might need to say things about themselves when there is a need. And we find that in the Sunnah of Rasulullah He says in hadith, Anna Sayyidu Waladi Adam, that I am the leader of all of mankind on the day of judgment. Wala Fakhr. But he said this is not due to pride. I'm not saying this out of pride and arrogance. But he had to mention a fact. This is a fact that we have to know. We have to know the status of Rasulullah. And so he had to mention this. This is part of conveying the message that I am the best of all creation. I am the best of the children of Adam. And we find also Yusuf alayhi salam, he did something similar after the people 
uh, of Egypt underwent a drought and he interpreted the, the dream of the king and the king released him from prison and Yusuf السلام, knowing that no one is capable of overseeing the storehouses and managing the drought as he is he said to the, he said to the king put me in charge of the storehouses that I am trustworthy and I am knowledgeable not to praise himself but he has to indicate this for the wider benefit of the community that there's nobody else capable of managing the storehouses and saving the people from the drought except for Yusuf and so it became mandatory for him to mention these qualities about himself but this is not the default and this is not how we should be normally conducting ourselves. We should always be humble and attribute any success and any bounties that Allah has bestowed upon us to the one who gave it to us, and that is Allah Azza wa Jal, and avoid any type of language which suggests that we are the ones who are responsible for our own accomplishments and our own success. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from pride and arrogance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us humility and submissiveness and humbleness اللهم آمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من خاسرين اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك العافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم انصر إخوانا للمستضعفين اللهم انصر إخوانا للمستضعفين اللهم انصر إخوانا المستضعفين في فلسطين وفي السودان وفي بنغلاديش وفي جميع بلاد المسلمين اللهم آمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما إن الله يأمركم العدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون قيم الصلاة